Okay, so in this video, I just want to go over the problem set guidelines and sort of what standards I will hold you to on your problem sets. Okay, the thing to keep in mind here is that uh, the point of this course is to learn how to communicate mathematical ideas clearly and correctly. Right? Just like any other form of writing, the point of writing a proof is to communicate your mathematical ideas to somebody else so that they understand them. And uh, so you should have read the problem set guidelines as part of your first problem set. And it may seem like I have sort of a lot of rules or something, right? And it's kind of true. This is kind of a long list of guidelines, but they're all toward the purpose of trying to help you write down problem set solutions that other people can read and understand. Okay, so the first one, the first part is like uh, just a really obvious thing in any kind of writing. If a person can't read what you're writing, then they can't understand your ideas, right? So everything that you turn in has to be legible and readable. If you type it up, this is of course a little bit easier, but some people have, I mean, most people have very legible handwriting, so you could also handwrite. So anything that makes your solution difficult to read or to, to grade, uh, the grader has some leeway to take some points off for that because your job is to communicate your solution to the grader, okay? Which goes into the second part, which is all answers should be presented as clearly as possible. Even if you're correct, if it's overly complicated, poorly structured, or hard to follow, that means that you haven't done a good job of communicating your argument, right? Okay, so here's a point that's sort of a sticking point for a lot of people, which is include the text of the question you're answering. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Uh, maybe first I should have actually opened up the first problem set, uh, which is somewhere here. Uh, right, so, okay, by you have to write, your pro write down each problem. I don't mean that you need to write down all of this, right? So this part is just for your instruction and has no bearing on the solution to the problem, right? Uh, same thing here. Uh, technically in problem one, uh, this part, uh, this part, this for example part, that's just for your benefit and isn't technically part of the problem. Uh, to be honest, even this twin prime part, this entire first paragraph technically doesn't need to be written on your problem set. What does need to be written are, is the problem. What, what does the problem ask? It defines triplet primes and it asks, are there any other triplet primes? And it says to either pr provide an example or explain why no other triplet primes exist. So if in your solution, you just start with one, I mean, yeah, if your solution goes like this, one, no, there are no triplet primes. Okay, imagine if somebody else were to pick up your, your homework paper and read this, they would have no idea what you're talking about, right? In, indeed, if you were to read this in one year, you go back and look at your problem set solutions and you see this, you have no idea what's happening, right? Because you don't know what a triplet prime is and you don't know what problem is being answered. So on problem one, you need to basically copy down at least this much so that if someone were to pick up your paper and read it, they would know what you're doing and what you're trying to communicate. Same thing in this problem you don't need to write down this prop, this part of the problem. However, you do need to write down this part and this part, and then make your conjectures, write down this part and then, and then write your conjectures. And then even this is part of the instructions, right? So that part needs to be written down in your homework. Okay, let me show you an example of why. Okay, so here's a really nice article that I'll, I will put in Canvas. And in fact, reading, will, I think I'll make this part of your next homework assignment. And uh, Francis Sue is a professor at Harvey Mudd, and he gives some examples of good mathematical writing and bad mathematical writing. Okay, so look at this solution here. If you were looking at a homework and you saw this, you would have no idea what's going on. You don't know what X is. You don't know what problem is being solved. You don't know like which part of this is the solution. So even if this is correct mathematically, this is communicated extremely poorly because the reader has no idea what's happening. Contrast it with his good example, which is this. Now, if you see this, it's immediately clear that it's much clearer than this top one, right? What is the problem? Find a point on the line y equals x that is distance 5 from the point 2, 1 and whose x coordinate is positive. Now I know what this person is doing without having to go to some, some other sheet of paper to look at it, right? So it clearly lists the problem and it clearly says where the solution is. And the solution is written really clearly. 
Okay, so uh, again, I'll put this in Canvas so you should read it on your own. Uh, it's, it'll be part of your next week's homework assignment so you can sort of get a jump ahead. But basically everything here is written clearly enough so that if you were to read it, you understand what's happening. So the standard that you should sort of have when you're running your problem sets is, can somebody else in the class pick up my, my problem set and follow my argument and understand what I'm trying to communicate? In fact, I, I found that students have a really good nose for this because if I were to post solutions that looked like this, you would all complain that you couldn't follow and you can understand what the solution was doing. Therefore, when I post solutions, I strive to write them in a way that looks like this, right? So that if you were to pick it up, you can understand what's happening. Your problem sets are held to the same standard because you have a week to do your problem set. Okay, so on the exam, which is timed, I'm not gonna ask you, for example, to write down the problem on your exam just because it, you don't have the time to do it. On your problem set though, you do have the time to do it. Okay, so that's why I have this guideline of you have to include the, the text of the question you're answering. Okay, so uh, I got another question about uh, problem one, which is it asks you to sort of explain why no other triple primes exist. Um, and technically, we haven't learned any proof techniques in this course yet, right? But that doesn't mean that you don't know how to prove anything. It just means that you don't know the specific techniques, the specific, specific names of techniques. You still know, I claim, when an argument makes sense. You know how to write complete sentences. You know how to convince somebody else of something. So let me just say the standard. Uh, let's say you're in the middle of a proof, and at some point you, you wrote, if x is even, then x squared plus 1 is odd. OK, if I were to write this in a lecture, you would probably ask why. Right. If you were you would ask why something is true, it means that you need to explain it in your homework. So this line in this proof, if I were the grader, I would say, okay, why is this true? And then I would say, well, you haven't completely answered the problem. Now, again, we haven't learned how to a bunch of terminology for what proofs are, but I think you'll agree with me that the following explanation is better. So first of all, uh, I'm assuming that somewhere here, the person said what X was, but let me just put it here. So suppose X is an integer. Anytime you introduce a variable, you better say what kind of variable it is. Otherwise the reader doesn't know, right? Now, if X is even, again, I can't just write then X squared plus one is odd because you would rightfully say why. In order to understand why, you need to figure out what's happening mathematically. Okay, so I, I had some discussions with someone on Piazza about something related to this. You have to understand what's happening. What is happening? Well, if x is even, x being even means that you can write x as two times some other integer, right? Uh, we haven't technically gone over this definition, but you could find it in your textbook, or if you're trying to understand what's happening, you can sort of figure this out. And that means that x squared plus one is four k squared plus one. And this thing here is even because it's a multiple of four. And so therefore the next number up will be odd. So that's the reason why if X is even the X squared plus one is odd. And I think I've sort of understood why it's happening in a way that I could explain it to one of my classmates. That explanation needs to be in this proof, right? So if X is even, well, then there exists another integer K such that, actually, I guess I should write this out, such that x is equal to 2 times k. OK, this is, uh, technically, it's the definition of even. But again, everyone in the class would be, would be able to follow this, right? But then x squared, is, sorry, maybe I should say x squared plus 1 equals 2k squared plus 1 equals 4k squared plus 1, which is one more than a multiple of four. And hence odd. So x squared plus one is odd. Okay, so this one line here, 
technically requires a sentence or two of explanation that needs to be there in order for anybody else in your class to pick up your homework and understand what the heck is going on. Okay, so this is even on the first problem set. Again, we haven't learned the names of any proof techniques. We haven't learned a bunch of different proof techniques, but you can still you can still recognize a good explanation from a bad one, right? Hopefully, you can recognize that this bottom thing is a complete explanation of what's happening, and here, in this step, the, whoever was writing the solution didn't completely explain what was happening because you don't know why it's true. Okay, so even in the first problem set, really the only like thing that needs an extremely good explanation is problem one, because all the rest of these are sort of like kind of computational in a sense. But again, this is a proof writing class. I want to start the, some, the quarter off with something that you need to explain. And as you, the course goes on, you will get better and better at writing proofs. Okay. Um, these things are sort of, will become sort of more relevant as the course goes on. Uh, but I've already mentioned that if you introduce a variable, you need to explain what it is. So let x be a real number such that x is greater than 2 is a good way to introduce a new variable. Uh, this should be not capitalized, right? I'll go back and fix that. Um, right. And again, let me plug. I made a video and like a website about how to use LaTeX. And if you have any LaTeX questions, please ask me. I highly encourage you to learn it. Again, I think it's a really genuinely useful skill, but it's not required. Okay, so hopefully this explained a little bit about the problem set guidelines. If you have any questions more, uh, post them to Piazza. Uh, I, just I just want you to know that there's a reason why I'm asking you to do these things. It seems like a little bit annoying, but it's, a, it's good practices. And in fact, as you take further math classes, if you adhere to these kinds of guidelines when you're writing up your solutions, then when you go back and look at, the, at your stuff from the courses in later quarters, you'll be able to remember what you did much better because you'll have written it really clearly for yourself. Okay. Again, any questions, post them to Piazza. Uh, and I'll have office hours this week where you can come ask me more questions. Good luck on your first problem set.